This is Rebel Therapist, a podcast for entrepreneurs who are trained as therapists and who want to level up their businesses, make a bigger impact, feel fulfilled, and be very well paid. I'm your host, Annie Schusler. Hi there. This is episode 100. I wanted to do something special and different this week. The theme today is lessons learned in expanding your business. I've been focusing more and more on my own lessons learned as I'm sharing on social media and especially with my email list. So if you're on there, you've probably noticed that. I've been talking about how as entrepreneurs, we find ourselves learning in public and we can either acknowledge what we're learning or we can try to seem as if we know everything. And I am much more interested in telling you what I'm learning and even acknowledging my mistakes. I think it's way more useful to you, and it also allows me to be myself, which just makes my life better. So I've been running this program, Rebel Mastermind, where therapists level up their businesses and serve in new ways beyond the therapy room. I invited some of the folks in this program who are right in the middle of it to bravely share with you. I asked each of them to tell us one surprising thing they've learned or that they're learning now in the process of expanding their businesses. And I asked them to tell us how those lessons are playing out in their businesses so far. Now, it's brave to do this and it's vulnerable and I think it's a real gift. As you listen to these four stories, you're going to notice some themes. All four of them talk about mindset issues. Even though we spend a lot of time in the program on strategy and on tactics, Mindset is huge. We simply cannot level up our businesses without doing a lot of personal work. Whenever we stretch and grow and level up, we're forced to face all kinds of uncomfortable feelings and uncomfortable things. One of the reasons I love working with you all, with therapists, is you tend to be willing to do that work. Our businesses often uncover old things we have more work to do on and new things we didn't realize we'd ever need to work on. I've been pushed and stretched in this way, and I still am, all the time. And I'm going to keep on being open about my own growth and struggles, but for today, we're going to focus on these four rebels. First, you'll hear from Becky Sherman, who helps women complete their dissertations. Listen to how Becky has gotten used to facing her fears and jumping off of cliffs. Hey there, my name is Becky Sherman, and I'm a clinical psychologist in Seattle, Washington. My story is that I was a professor of psychology for many years and then left about three years ago and started my private practice. The whole private practice starting thing was a, was a huge journey, but now I totally love it and all of the freedom that it affords me. At the same time, I have been missing teaching and mentoring and impacting a larger number of people. I'm also at a time in my life where I'm starting to look towards the future when my kids are out of the house. And my husband and I would like to move abroad at that point. But in order to do that, we need to have some sort of income. So as I was pondering how to reconnect with teaching and how to create an income from wherever I live in the future, it became clear that teaching online could possibly allow me to meet both of those desires. So last September, I joined an online course to learn how to create and launch an online course. (laughs) And I have now just finished my first course, and it was awesome. So, so fun. My course is for women who are writing their dissertations and want support on the long dissertation journey so that they can get it done. I teach women how to create a positive mindset, productive habits, tools to overcome obstacles, and community. I'm now currently in the midst of creating a paid membership community as a way to support more women dissertation writers at a more affordable price. So I started my journey about nine months ago, and I cannot tell you how much I have learned along the way. But I think the biggest lesson for me has been about learning to name and face my fears. This whole online teaching thing has brought up fears I didn't even know I had. I was scared of being seen, scared of failing publicly and making a fool of myself, scared of opening myself up to unknown haters, scared of all the new technology I needed to learn, tons of stuff. And the fear was totally holding me back. I was so excited about creating this course, but I would get stalled and paralyzed. I would, you know, run to play with whatever shiny object I could find until I was able to like name my fear and then face it. So 
my solution was to listen to many wise people and start to do things imperfectly. This whole, you know, progress over perfection thing. The way that I think about it is that I started throwing myself off of one cliff after another. So before my first webinar, I just thought, here I go, jumping off a cliff. I have no idea what's about to happen. When I sent out my first email to an email list, same feeling. The first Facebook ad I created and put out to the world, the first open cart, every step was completely new and foreign to me, and I knew I was doing it imperfectly. But now, my new mantra is progress over perfection. In fact, I kind of love throwing myself off of cliffs now. Like I love facing the fear and doing something completely new and scary to me and seeing what happens. It's kind of an adrenaline rush and the outcome makes it totally worth it. I have definitely changed and grown as a person as a result of facing my fears in my business. And I'm super grateful for that. In fact, maybe I'll go skydiving this afternoon. Now we'll hear from Dr. Rocio Rosales Mesa, who serves and helps to liberate women of color. Listen to how she was surprised to face mindset issues that she'd already worked on and how she's embraced that work and shared it with her community. Saludos, this is Dr. Rocio Rosales Mesa. I am a Chicana mama, counseling psychologist, and an empath. And what's driving me to level up is really answering a call, um, trusting my intuition and being fired (laughs) from my previous position because I lost my health and was no longer able to perform at the level that I previously was as a psychology professor. So really, I think looking back at my experience, I look at it from a spirituality perspective and I think it's spirit pushed me out of a toxic environment. And what I thought at the time was the end of the world almost um, has been the greatest blessing in that it set me on this new path. And the experience of, you know, losing my position and losing my health and having to, you know, go through physical, mental, emotional, spiritual healing has now put me in a position to serve women of color like me. And I'm now interested in in serving women of color to experience greater peace, greater, you know, calm in their lives, to experience holistic wellness, mind, body, and spirit being aligned, and also to experience liberation from the institutions, the systems, the messaging that we receive that tells us we're not good enough, that tells us, you know, we're only here to serve, that tells us we're not worthy, that, you know, we, you know, just exist to serve the needs of others. And so I want to, just as I have been liberated, as I've walked, you know, through my healing journey, I want to be able to liberate other women of color um, and share what I've learned through this journey. And so one thing that I've really learned, there's a couple of things that I really learned in uh, the process of expanding my business that has surprised me. One is that I I didn't know how how much business development was t- tied to your own personal development. I didn't know that I would be faced with so many unconscious negative messages that that you know have come up in the past. I thought, you know, I'm kind of I've been there, done that. I've I've worked on those things, but you know, it's been, you know, a, a another personal development journey in in working on the business. It's you know, messaging like, who am I to be doing this? There's so many other people that could be doing this. And not only who am I to do this, but, you know, people are really going to listen to what I have to say and are really going to trust my expertise. People are actually going to pay me for my expertise. You know, who am I? All that stuff has been coming up. And so feeling, you know, like an imposter and not, you know, feeling like I'm worthy enough to be showing up so big. 
Um, so all of that stuff has been surprising for me. I thought business was, you know, just, you know, you, you build a structure and, and you plan and you work with some numbers. That's what I thought business was. I didn't know business would uncover all of these unconscious messaging, uh, that I received throughout my lifetime again. Um, so what I've really had to do was to be really mindful, you know, really put my mindfulness skills to use, to be really mindful of my self-talk and to, to be very aware when I start to engage in negative self-talk and so that I do not get stuck in a negative mindset, to really take my own advice, the messaging that I send out to my audience, you know, I, 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 take my own advice. You know, I tell them, you know, when imposter syndrome is white supremacy and the patriarchy imprisoning your spirit. And every time you shrink yourself, you doubt yourself, the patriarchy and white supremacy wins. And, And so for me, it's really taking that advice and And even writing that, it it helps me to externalize uh, and not internalize that messaging. Also, what's really helped me get unstuck is to just show up as a human and to acknowledge when I am, you know, struggling and and sharing that with my audience, Um, sharing when you know I haven't been kind to myself and I've overworked, sharing when I've you know, doubted myself. Um, I share that, you know, I guess I, I, I become vulnerable, uh, with them, but I really feel like it's sharing in community, uh, because although I'm an expert, I also feel I am part of a community, uh, with them and I'm human and I'm going to experience these things too. And I'm right there on the journey with them. And Um, when I share those things, it sort of liberates me to not have to be just this expert. It just allows me to be human, allows me to really get unstuck from, um, feeling like I have to have all the answers. Um, like I have to have it, you know, together all the time. Um, it really liberates me and it really allows my audience to, uh, relate to me. They've always been so appreciative when I've shared moments like that. Um, so I think it's been mutually beneficial to just show up as my full self. And that's something that I have realized has been very beneficial to my business is just showing up as my full self, that I don't always have to have it together and, and that's okay. And it's actually even better for your audience when, uh, when you do allow yourself to be vulnerable um, because it allows you to, to connect and, and serve them in a different way. And the last thing I just want to say is, uh, what has really helped me get unstuck is to think of serving, trusting that from a spiritual perspective, trusting that I have been given a gift, you know, for some people it's God, it's source, it's the universe, trusting that spirit for me, I say spirit, spirit has given me a gift and I have been entrusted with that for a reason. It, it's to serve others and to liberate others and to liberate other women of color, other mothers of color and their children. And so when I think and I come from a place of service, then it no longer becomes about me and I get unstuck and I get out of that negative thinking and it allows me to step into my higher purpose. So um, that has really allowed me to step into the content uh, that I want to write, that I want to deliver, it's service allows me to step into my higher purpose. And so that makes it easier for me to write. That makes it easier for me to connect, you know, think about who my ideal audience is. That makes it easier for me to show up on social media. Um, It just has, it liberates me when I think about serving others. So those are just a few thoughts. Thank you uh, for thinking of me. Hope this is helpful. Thank you. Bye. Now we'll hear from Greg Bodan, who helps men stay psychologically healthy and resilient. Listen to how Greg is embracing moments of not knowing 
and realizing how much this leveling up is an iterative process. My name is Greg Bodam. I'm a psychotherapist in San Francisco where I work primarily with men. I specialize in treating anxiety, trauma, and men's sex issues. Regardless of my clients, I see guys trying to manage work and relationships and their health and really struggling. And this is a common theme throughout. Life keeps changing, disruptions keep happening, and they don't feel that they have the tools to cope. And really, they're trying to stay psychologically healthy and resilient. I've, I've noticed that my training and my experience working one-on-one with these guys has a broader application. I see where there are guys who maybe don't need therapy, or at least not therapy right now, but they could still use some support, some ideas, some training around this stuff. So I've begun moving into engaging a larger audience of men by applying the principles I use in my therapy practice. Um, I'm engaging more in social media, as well as offering training opportunities. And really, these are targeted to men who are seeking growth, tools for positive change, and ways to manage the stressors and disruptions that will keep happening in our modern world. You know, what I've learned from this process is that I thought at first that this was going to be linear and I would just build on things. And, and while that's certainly true, I think it's a little more complicated. It feels like I put something out there and that always takes some courage that I have to dig in and find. And then I get feedback. I learn from that experience. But that information, that feedback requires me to go back and make revisions and try something again. And so it's been much more of an iterative process of putting something out, trying it out, getting feedback, putting something else out and so on. I've definitely had to practice being willing to be in a place of not knowing uh, and being okay with that. Uh, In addition to courage, being okay with the not knowing, not being sure has been really important to making this process work. Finally, let's hear from Cindy Rivera, who offers a mindfulness course and community for women of color. Listen to how she's leaned into vulnerability and into the community of the Rebel Mastermind to get her voice out there and to serve in a bigger way. Hi there. I'm Cindy Rivera. I'm a bilingual woman of color, marriage family therapist in Oakland, California, also serving the East Bay. I have a private practice working with individuals, couples, teens, and especially people of color. The tagline to my business is listening with heart. I love doing deep work with people and being deeply present to their pain and heartache and then bearing witness to their healing as they become empowered and actually feel liberated in their own lives, internally and externally. A core part of my therapy work is to incorporate mindfulness skills and tools. In addition to my private practice and with Annie's Rebel Therapist programs, I have developed and am offering my signature online mindfulness course for women of color called Hot Mess to Calm Oasis and an ongoing membership community where people of color can continue to get support and learn cool and effective ways to deal with their stress and to take care of themselves and their important relationships. I'm offering this to women of color because as one myself, I know the stress we all face living in this world, doing our regular things like work, taking care of our family, having a decent relationship with our partner, affording to live here, parenting our teens. But I think as women of color, we face an added level of hardship and alienation in this racist society, and I want to provide a space and community for that that is relevant for the woman of color's needs and experiences. I know mindfulness is quite popular these days, but I don't think there are enough circles or communities for women of color to have their own experience with it that's not taken over by people who don't understand those personal experiences. I personally use practices of mindfulness, and they've been profoundly helpful to me. I want to share that empowering information with more than the one or two people sitting in my office at any one time. And I want to make it accessible to more folks than can come in for therapy. I also offer a ton of free stuff on the same theme on my website. So from participating in Annie's Rebel Therapist communities, I have benefited much and become empowered myself. 
I have learned to apply to myself what I so naturally teach others, especially in terms of self-compassion, as I do this business venture that is often scary or so frustrating. Although I do have to say, the things that were more scary and frustrating at the beginning have become much more manageable and less painful, thanks to Annie's insights and guidance. I feel good about my own pace. I've learned what my superpowers are and how to share them with a larger community in a non-apologetic way. I've learned about the kindness and insightful generosity of the community of rebel therapists that gives back to me every time that I'm vulnerable or feel doubtful or uncertain about myself. And I've learned in real-time practice that my being vulnerable is hugely important to the gifts I benefit from and the growth I experience throughout this process. I've learned that I can market with grace and dignity and not feel scuzzy about it, and that I can share my gifts in a way that is actually of service to others. And most importantly, being part of the Rebel Therapist community has been another spiritual awakening of sorts for me in my own professional development. Nearly 30 years ago, when I first took my exams to become a therapist, I felt totally blessed to be honored as being capable of being a therapist. Then, about 15 years later, I realized I had become a really good therapist who felt really solid about my skills and ability to help, and I knew I could be a good therapist in the room with one or two clients at a time. But now, to then take those honed superpowers and present them to the world with way more confidence than I ever had or could have before, feels so transformative. Being more of who I am as human being and therapist, with Annie's help, is way more meaningful than I could have ever imagined and lets me do my part in making the world a better place. I want to thank Becky Sherman, Dr. Rocio Rosales Meza, Greg Bodan, and Cindy Rivera for being willing to share this with us. They're phenomenal rebels, and I'm so lucky I get to work with them. You'll find out how to learn more about each of them and how to follow them in the show notes of today's episode on rebeltherapist.me. Okay, now it's your turn. What lessons have you been learning that have surprised you as you level up your business? How are those lessons playing out in the choices you're making? We'll be back next time with an interview. Thank you so much for listening and for being part of this podcast as we pass episode 100. I'll see you soon.